Okay, hello everybody, it's Mr Hartley here um, for your uh, PSHE wellbeing activity today I'm going to walk you through how to make a really simple and really delicious tomato sauce not really tomato sauce like ketchup more like the sort of thing that you might put uh, on top of some pasta or to put on top of a pizza base something like that okay um, I've tried to keep it really really simple so you don't need any kind of prior knowledge about cooking or anything like that um, and I'm going to take you through really slowly step by step um, and hopefully what I would imagine is that you'll actually have the video running while you do it so that you can pause the video as and when you need to um, to get things right okay but hopefully this will make a real difference and you might be able to um, knock up a, a really nice sauce for your family's dinner tonight um, I should say obviously um, I will be using a sharp knife and I will be working with uh, heat obviously in the saucepan uh, so you do have to make sure that you get permission um, and I think ideally you would probably have somebody supervising you if you're not somebody who's used to cooking if you already do a lot of cooking in your house then clearly you probably don't need to be supervised for this activity um, if you've only tuned into this video to see Boo and Chewy, you're going to have to wait till the end or fast forward to the end. I, I will go and get them, um, but not until I've shown you this sauce. OK, last thing. Uh, yes, before you say it, I am rocking the hairband because lockdown hair. Am I right? Um, there's nothing that you can say to me that my wife hasn't already said about this hairband. So save the comments. OK. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the basic ingredients. I'm hoping that most people will have most of these things uh, in the kitchen. Um, if you don't have one or two of them, don't worry, it's not a big deal. OK, um, there are some that are really important, but I'll tell you what they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera down and I'm going to talk you through the ingredients um, one by one. So. First things first, we're making a tomato sauce, so we're going to need some tomatoes. So there's two options here. You can either use tinned tomatoes, which is absolutely fine, or if you've got some of this stuff, it's called passata, which is basically just squashed up tomatoes that have been put through a sieve. And that's what I'm going to be using. If you do use the tinned tomato, just make sure that you pour them out into a bowl first and, and give them a good mush with a fork before you start the cooking process. You're going to need some oil. Of some sort, I've got some light olive oil here. You can just as easily use vegetable oil or sunflower oil. That's not a problem at all. You're going to need an onion, or we're probably only use we're probably only going to use half the onion today. You're going to need some lemon juice, um, either like this from a from a bottle, or if you've got a spare lemon lying around, and you you can just cut it in half and squeeze it into a into a glass, something like that. You're only going to need a little bit of it, so don't worry about um, uh, don't worry about it if you haven't got too much of this. This is one of the things that's not essential, so don't worry if you haven't got any lemon juice. You're going to need some salt, just basic table salt. You're going to need some garlic. Now, this is garlic paste. I buy this from the local Chinese supermarket because uh, I like garlic and I eat a lot of garlic. OK, if you've got some garlic cloves in the house, you can um, use those. So make sure you take the skin off um, and then and then squash them up. I'm sure you can find out how to do that via YouTube if you've never done it before. And then you're going to need just a little bit of sugar. All right. Just this is just granulated sugar. It's a teaspoon. All right. Um, worth, a teaspoon's worth of, of sugar. Uh, you're going to need a, a saucepan, ideally a non-stick saucepan with a lid. And of course, for the onion, you're going to need a, a knife or it doesn't have to be like this one. Um, it can it can you know just be a knife that's sharp enough to cut the onion. OK, so if you want to pause the video now, you can go and get yourself all of these ingredients. Um, and then we will crack on. OK, so I'm going to move all of this stuff out of the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the onion. I'm just going to keep the camera on the chopping board. Now, um, a lot of you will be thinking to yourself, oh, I hate cutting onions because they always make me cry. Well, here's a tip. OK, so see, this is the onion. I've got the, the kind of um, the hairy bit at one end and I've got the sort of stalky bit at the other end. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to make a cut just like that okay get rid of that bit we don't need that bit and then I'm going to pop the onion on its um, front make sure I've got the hairy bit facing up you can strip the hair away from it 
and then I'm going to cut just straight down through the hairy bit like that okay and then I'm going to put that half to one side because I'm only going to use one half of it all right and then I'm not going to cut that bit away so do you see that the hairy bit is still intact all right so then I'm going to strip the skin and what I, I, I tend to do is I just go in and I just get inside that first layer of onion flesh and just get the whole lot off all right and make sure you get this kind of translucent skin away as well okay because uh, that's not very nice to eat but uh, notice do you see I'm still uh, keeping the hairy end intact and you'll notice probably from my voice no tears so far and that is because the onion doesn't know to give up its juices because I've kept the hairy bit intact so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a series of cuts keeping my fingers well out of the way this is the bit where you need some supervision if you're not a somebody who cooks all right and then I'm just going to cut the onion fairly finely so that it's in little chunks it doesn't have to be exact guys you don't have to worry about it, it you know all the chunks being the same or anything like that get rid of that hairy bit and no tears all right so there you go so that's my onion so I'm going to take my saucepan I wonder if you can see that over there I think you probably can can't you you see what I'm doing? Maybe if I put this light on, how's that? Yeah, there we go. So, I put my saucepan on the pot without dropping it, ideally. All right, and I'm going to put the flame up quite high. Don't worry if you've got an electric hob. Electric hob works just as well. Okay, you want a fairly high setting. And I'm just going to pour about a teaspoon's worth of oil into the pan. Like I said, it can be vegetable oil, it can be sunflower oil, it can be anything you like. Is this a bit weird? Listening to a headless voice how's that? how's that that's a bit better isn't it? and you can see i'm um, rocking the hair back all right so i'm just going to leave that for a sec to let the oil heat up we want the oil fairly warm all right we want it so that when the onion goes in it sizzles a little bit okay so just bear with me a second while that happens all right how are you all are you all okay you all missing me i'm missing you very much can't wait to see you all fingers crossed on monday i mean of course I don't know when I'm making the video, it's half term at the moment, so I don't know whether I will be seeing you on Monday the 8th, but I'm really hoping that I will be. Of course, I see some of you anyway in school. Okay, so what you can see is that, hopefully you can see, the oil is moving fairly freely in the pan. You can't see that at all, can you? Well, the oil is moving fairly freely in the pan, that means that it's nice and warm. So I'm just going to take a teeny bit of onion. Yeah, sizzling nicely. All right, so we're going to take the onion. Hopefully you can hear that sizzle. All right, and we're just going to give it a little stir around in the oil. And then, lid on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to now pause my video so that you don't have to just sit there watching me watching onions cooking. All right, and I'll tell you when I come back on how long I left them. All right, so back in a tick. Now, what I should have said is that every now and then, while it's cooking, lid off, little stir, stop it sticking, lid back on. That's what I should have said. Okay, hello, welcome back. Um, the onions have been cooking probably for about two, two minutes. You just have to keep an eye on them, really. If they start to burn, you need to turn the heat down because you don't want burnt onions, okay? It's, it's okay if they go a little bit brown, a little bit crispy. I mean, some people like to keep them completely colourless. I quite like them a little bit um, browned, all right? But they mustn't burn, okay? Now, here's the thing. This is the joyful bit. This is the really amazing bit. This is the bit that's really simple. All those ingredients I talked to you about earlier on. There goes the steam. The great thing is... They now just all get thrown in, okay? So in one go. So here's my garlic, my garlic paste. I like garlic, like I told you, so probably one, 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 two, yeah, that, that should be enough, all right? Then I'm gonna put my, oh, delicious. Then I'm gonna put my passata in, and look how thin that is at the moment, guys. You see, all right, it's basically like tomato juice. All right, I'm just gonna throw all of that in like that. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to run it 
under the cold tap and swirl it around. This is why I wore a red t-shirt so that if I splashed it on myself it wouldn't matter. I'm going to pop that back in because I want to make a fair bit of sauce here. Okay, and get all of the goodness out of that. All right, so that's that. And then here's my lemon juice. And remember what I said, we only need a little bit. So I'm probably just going to go one splash, two splashes. All right, that's probably enough. Put that back on. Salt. Okay, be, be careful when it's in this sort of pourer because it does tend to come out fairly quickly. So put it in your hand, give it a good pinch. All right, there's one pinch, two pinches. All right, that's probably enough. And then the magic ingredient, in goes the sugar, all right? So I'm going to stir all that round. Stir, 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 stir. And then I'm going to pop it back on the heat. Turn the heat right up, put the lid back on, and I'm going to just wait, probably for about 30 seconds, until I start to see some bubbles appearing, all right? And at that point, I'm going to do something different. Don't worry, it's nearly time for Boo and Chewy. Okay, so there's some very, very, very small bubbles appearing right around the edge of the pan. They're not the ones I'm interested in. I want to wait until it's starting to really gloop up like something out of a sci-fi film. That's what I want. Here they come. Imagine it's like a frog breathing up through the surface that's the bubble that you want to see okay there's one so at this point what we're going to do we're just going to turn the heat right down right to really low setting one last stir and then i'm just going to leave that with the lid off okay maybe a bit higher than that all right just going to leave it with the lid off. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it until the magic moment where, and here's a reference that you won't understand, but your parents will. Here's one I made earlier. Right. You end up with something that looks like this. Right now, do you remember how thin the passata was? And then we put all that water in it as well. All right. What we're looking for. Is that kind of consistency like a puree okay and that is it that's it all right simple as really tasty um, and and really versatile so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna talk you through a couple of different things that you could use this pasta or this sorry tomato sauce for just giving it away haven't I you can put it on pasta okay um, just eat it as it is absolutely delicious um, or you could put some, you know, green vegetables through it, some peas, a bit of courgette, maybe obviously you'd have to cook those. So again, you know, look, look on YouTube or if you're not a cook. Um, you could also spread it on, on toast or on pita bread or on a pizza base, anything bready basically. Put a load of, of uh, grated cheese on top, stick it under the grill, got homemade pizza, and obviously you can, you can top that however you like. Put a bit of, um, you know, spice in it, some chili flakes or some paprika, for example, or some cumin or some cayenne pepper. And actually, you've got the you've got the beginnings of a sort of a curry sauce. OK, you can also, guys, just use this if you chop some raw onion like we saw a minute ago um, and maybe some coriander, something like that and maybe a bit of lime juice and all of a sudden you've got a salsa and you can dip your crisps into okay so it's just a really 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 versatile simple thing to make that you know hopefully will allow you to to make something delicious for your family i think the key thing is once it's at this stage that's your base then experiment play with it all right put put different flavorings in and see what you like you know do you like um, spicy things well then put some chili powder in it do you like um, sort of really traditional kind of British tasting things maybe use something like sage or thyme or rosemary to make a sauce with um, Italian uh, flavors and herbs things like oregano okay just just mess around with it guys all right once you've got that base 
you can be really creative. Okay, so fingers crossed. Don't know what that was. Fingers crossed. Okay, um, you've been able to follow along. That's bubbling away nicely. I'm going to have that for my dinner tonight. All right. Um, fingers crossed that's given you the inspiration that you need to go now and, and have a go if you haven't been um, doing it along with me. All right. And I suppose the last thing that I should do really is the thing I think a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to get the dogs. Get them their favourite treat, which is broccoli. They can probably hear the fridge, but I put the uh, put the door to the sitting room shut. Let's see whether they could hear it. Why don't I put this here so you can see the dogs? How's that? Here they come. Yeah, great. Comes one. Dogs, come in. There's Boot and there's Chew. Sit. Ready? Off they go. Have a good weekend, everybody. I'll see you soon.